Okay, today I'm going to show you how to use Rhino to grab the file you'll be submitting to Shapeways, but to also make a sort of proposal image, so this Shapeways object is not going to come back for weeks or even a month maybe, depending on the materials you pick. So we also need to generate kind of a facsimile that'll show us what you're intending to do. Uh, the other advantage about creating this sort of proposal image is that this is the way that you're going to conduct your art and design practice out there in the future. So instead of outlaying your own money, you might apply to a grant, you might apply to a competition, and what you want to be able to say is, this is how this thing is going to look in a public park, or here's how I plan for the fountain to work, or here's how the ring fits on the finger, without necessarily outlaying all that money um, in order to get the grant or the other opportunity. So I'm going to make a little picture here where uh, I have this just goofy uh, mace. And I'm going to sort of place it quasi-realistically, passingly realistically, into a photo. So step one, I just went down to Photo Booth. Um, you can do this with your cell phone camera, with a nice DSLR, etc. And I just captured a picture of myself in a certain posture and holding a reference object so I could get a sense of the angle that I'm trying to get. Okay, so here I've just captured a dowel rod. I can see it tips out slightly at the top and I get a general sense of its proportions. Now, if we move over to Rhino, I've also modeled this object, which is pretty straightforward, pardon my windows. And uh, the reason that this window looks a little different than normal is right now I have it in rendered. So let me switch that back to shaded, just so we can get a sense of how this object is placed on the screen. You'll see that to get things right, I was really looking at, if you highlight this uh, rod right here, I was trying to get the proportions. So the width versus the length and the orientation, so I just get a little bit of reveal up here. I've actually had to plunge really far down beneath the um, construction plane in order to get that just right. And then I used a polar array to put these spikes out here on the surface. So all geometric primes, all very simple. Now if you want things to start looking more interesting in terms of rendering, the default way to render this is just to hit the blue button and make no changes, and you'll get a very simple object but I've actually gone a little bit further here. So if you get online, oops, you've caught me looking at Facebook. Uh, if we get online da, 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 and look up something, for example, like you see here, iron texture, uh, textures come up very frequently because there's tons of people doing this sort of um, uh, more advanced rendering work. So when I look for images, I want to make sure to pick something that's really high resolution. And I can do that here under search tools by making sure the size of the images are large. Although most of the texture images you search for will be large. Avoid things that have watermarks on them, so there are people putting that on there encouraging you to pay. And pick something that seems to have a fairly large pixel dimension. So this is a couple thousand pixels in one dimension. Just make sure that you click all the way through to the actual image. You'll find with some of this stuff, if it's intended for desktops and so forth, it'll sort of auto-direct you and try to get you to pay. And so, so try to find an image where you can go straight to a big picture like this and then right-click for a Save As. So I downloaded an iron texture and I also downloaded a wood texture. Get that ugly mug out of here. Okay, so if we head back to this view, I can switch this thing to rendered and that'll give me a better sense of what I'm about to change and as you'll see man if you really want to get into rendering high quality images there are just a thousand options so I want to show you what you can start to play with and especially for those of you that are really ahead of the game right now like your models are all done you can make a really really awesome proposal image so I'll click on one of these objects and then I'm going to hold down the mouse here oh actually let me have you do something else first so I click on the object and then I click here on this little Technicolor circle which is Object Properties. You remember that last time when we made the duck we just had these solid colors which we found under Material and then Object. And I'll go to the same uh, location but instead of picking a color here I want to scroll down and I want to give this thing a texture. So you'll see no file here, you're just going to click there and say Choose and then I directed the uh, computer to my wood.jpg, my wood texture. Now if you find that the wood comes up in the wrong direction, you can alter the, uh, the U's and the V's. These are basically the orientation of the image uh, as it wraps on the surface. I think it works just fine for my purposes, so I'm going to leave it there. I did the same thing up here with a different texture for my, my iron ball and the spikes. Now if you want to change other aspects to make things easier to work with, we go back to holding our mouse down here, 
And if we go to render settings, there's just a million different things you can change. So one of the things I did is to use a custom resolution. For example, if I blow up the perspective window, something like that, I'll get a bigger image. And then if I go to render settings, I can ask it to go to 300 instead of something smaller. Uh, it looks like I want this picture to probably be larger in inches too. Uh, you can do some stuff, for example, like making the color white in the background. If you have a primarily dark object, will make its isolation easier later. Oh, it looks like we can also uh, export with a transparent background. That's nice, too. Uh, let's see. So if you get into advanced, I'll let you fiddle around with this stuff. It talks about the way that the light bounces around the atmosphere and the reflectivity and transparency of the object. You can really get down into it. Um, I found it was good to um, bump up a little bit of uh, jitter, which kind of makes it look like the camera is slightly out of focus. Be right back.